Um, so please come up, uh, Jacopo. You've seen him already. Um, he's going to talk about scarcity and abundance, documenting citizen reactions to water management issues in Latin America. So we're moving on to a third continent. Thank you, Fred. Um, well, I, I, I was thinking when you were talking initially, um, I had a, some couple of uh, ideas to introduce you to this presentation, but then I, when I heard you speaking about the roles and, and our backgrounds here in the room, I completely shifted to something different, and which is actually it's interesting that you brought the, the attention and the fact that the role of journalists should be interpreted as more... It's a naming and shaming style of doing things. And that's exactly one of the things that I would like to stress, which is that is why it's important to have such events where also the voice of uh, NGO uh, that, that do care about this is, um, is put in, in, in relation to the role of journalists. Because uh, I can talk about my own organization, Water Integrity Network. Surely we don't do na naming and shaming. But that, this is not a point. I mean, our role is different in that sense because uh, what we would, let me just get back for a, for, for a second at uh, the very beginning of our story since 2006 when we started. Um, you know, uh, in, the, in the decades of the 90s, um, started the, the overall discussion about corruption and the role of good governance and so on and so forth. But when we started investigating on the importance of corruption in water, that was exactly because we wanted to provide more evidence on what is working and what is not working uh, in the global development when we talk about corruption, especially in the water sector. So um, we interpret our role as, or we should interpret our role as supporting this type of action provided by journalists. And we do care um, as, as much as you care about the importance of the sources of information about the stories. But what we do with those stories is try to raise the awareness of what is really relevant to make a change. So uh, some of the hints that I will try to provide here are uh, not exhaustive. Of course, I cannot talk about uh, a case very deeply in, in 10 minutes, of course. But it's just an idea of um, uh, how we perceive our, these different roles and why it is so important to find a way to collaborate more strongly. Um, I also would like to uh, talk about, here I put it like active citizenry, because I think that uh, no matter what the topic is and no matter what the country in, is, I mean, we do work for the same, uh, uh, you know, big goal, which is to have better services for our citizens, to have better rights uh, for our citizens in a way or more uh, efficient way to, to provide water services in this case. So ultimately, we, we do not have to miss that point out from our conversation because we don't want this uh, uh, exercise becoming too technical uh, to lose the sight of what is really relevant, which is the benefit of, of, of people. So the three cases today will try to, um, um, in a way, explain in very different, uh, with very different approaches why is relevant this sort of collaboration. So the first case uh, is something that we um, explored uh, um, along with the, um, the same period, the, the same journalist who, who wrote this, uh, this article and was actually awarded with an important prize in Latin America for investigative journalism in 2014. And um, it's about the, the long-term process of um, um, you know, privatization of, of, of water in, in, uh, in Chile. But we, we are not going to talk about the, 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 the political issue that they, they spend a lot of time in, in deciding if it's better to amend the water law or amend the constitution. This is not the topic. The topic is this journalist spent um, a lot of time getting to the source of information, speaking with people, speaking with farmers in the north of the country that were cut out of the services because water rights were um, sold out to some, some companies. Um, and, uh, and people involved were not concerned, uh, well, were not in, involved in the, in the decision process. So uh, the work that these journalists started to do was, you know, uh, everybody was 
uh, focused on the political process and losing the side on what it was happening to the citizens. So that's why we, f we, we found it was interesting. We interview him and uh, we talk, and we actually ma made a blog post on it, but um, this is a case where you really sense that it's a, a service provided to, to, to citizens that otherwise wouldn't have a chance to know about this, what is going on in here. The second case, uh, I would like to mention is something not yet published, but about to publish. It's a PhD thesis about to publish by the Humboldt University in Germany. And this young researcher from Colombia, um, th that's really interesting. She started the, the investigation, the research, investigating basically uh, the disconnections from water services in um, low-income uh, neighborhoods in Medellin, Colombia. You know, typically understanding why the disconnection happened, uh, what was the decision from the, uh, the, the point of view of the provider, from the point of view of, of citizens, and ended up discovering an entire world of um, participation of criminal groups in the management of, of water pipes that was totally unexpected. And so she developed herself a survey to uh, understand by interviewing uh, house per house, I mean households, and, uh, and understanding why these people being disconnected was approached by, were approached by um, uh, criminal groups, uh, in this case, the Bakrim operating in, in uh, um, suburbs of Medellin. And the interesting thing is um, she, uh, she f uh, found a lot of interest for um, the, the topic as such. Uh, families, of course, do care about water connection, but of course they were afraid of providing information and be, and of course, the retaliation of, of both the criminal groups and, and other uh, living uh, in the same area. So um, the security level that uh, was, um, you know, at stake in this sort of investigation was uh, completely changed uh, in the middle of the, of, of the research, which is also something that uh, she took uh, on board and she uh, also uh, achieved to manage in a... In a, in, a, in a good way. The third case is about um, a reportage published by The Guardian, um, uh, where actually we had a chance to interview um, uh, the photographer who took um, uh, care of all the pictures included in the reportage. And uh, the, the interesting story here, here is we're talking about one of the uh, most, uh, I don't know if there are any Brazilian in here, but it's a quite known favela in Sao, in Sao Paulo, uh, Favela do Moinho. We're talking about, about yeah, 2,500 uh, residents that are, are relying just on a, on a single blue pipe uh, for water connection. And the interesting part, the relevant part of the story is uh, they have been trying a lot to uh, claim I mean, to uh, sensitize the municipality for um, a proper water connection, and they didn't, su uh, uh, didn't achieve it. But uh, in a way, um, that pushed them to um, start a community discussion where they were supported by an NGO locally, and they started to understand that they need to make their voice aloud. So that's why the story uh, started, and uh, this, this young journalist started the investigation. And actually uh, was, uh, if you want a demand from, from citizen in, in a way, of course she had to verify all the sources of information to take care of all the, the due process, but ultimately it was something very in the light of uh, providing them a service because otherwise their voice uh, couldn't be heard. So I found that uh, in a way uh, all these stories as, uh, may have factors in common uh, this is, of course, not a scientific analysis I would like to, sh uh, to, to share with you, but still it offers some point of context um, uh, talking about those factors that in a way can help us find commonalities in terms of the availability of information, first of all, um, uh, but then also the, the, the engagement with citizens, the security of the environment, and last but not least, the collaboration of institutions. So... Um, this is really, um, again, a rough uh, scheme, but uh, you may say that even when the level of, for example, taking the, the, the security of the environment um, under examination, they are very different uh, among each other in these cases. Nevertheless, they achieve to deliver uh, the product. Nevertheless, they achieve to contact the community leaders and have them on board while investigating these issues. So that talks also about 
uh, the level, the required level of engagement with citizens. So uh, when they approached these communities, the entry point, the main entry point was uh, via community leaders that in a way helped the, 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 the situation to be, to be um, easier for them. Um, so let me just get back to uh, some of the cases while uh, try to highlighting um, uh, some notes that, that I found um, that make me um, think about uh, our role and the role of journalists. Um, in the case of Colombia, um, she found that the, the sensitiveness uh, involved in this investigation was um, so relevant that building trust with, with, with the community was even more important that having, you know, all the data already prepared and all the, the, the statistics, if you want. They, the, the, she has been looking for a lot of, of figures and data with, via the municipality, for example. But then she understood that it was crucial to have their trust before anything else. Um, and aside of, I mean, on top of it, uh, in the second case I, I, I'm bringing here in, uh, under consideration, the Chilean one, um, this, this, this journalist, while talking with us, say, you know what, uh, all the newspaper, and that is something that I, that I really think uh, it's not only for the, for the water sector, but it's for the, for the governance sector in general. Uh, he was saying, you know, all the newspaper were talking about big scandals, big movements of parties deciding or not deciding to um, amend the Constitution. And they were totally, uh, you know, forgetting about the most important thing. And, of course, the citizens and, and the rights of citizens. But even more importantly, by consulting each other by talking uh, with other parties, they are losing time, and time is precious. And there are people cut it off, cut it out of services that are about to collapse in the north of the region, and no one is doing nothing, because they are spending time in things that are political processes, but that are not up to speed with needs of, of people. So again, uh, just to briefly wrap up, um, I think that, I mean, um, I don't want to provide uh, hints for, for journalism. I mean, you are the specialist, you are the expert, you know how to approach stories. What I'm saying here, um, our role, I mean, the role of NGOs in this crucial uh, issue is uh, more of, um, you know, supporting you, providing those contacts to have entry point, to build the trust with the community, to also make sure that community leaders are aware of what, what are the sense of what you're doing and why you're doing that. Um, not looking for, uh, you know, an award or a space in the, in the newspaper uh, uh, to become famous, but because you do care about communities and what is happening uh, with them. Uh, so ultimately, I mean, that's why we prefer to talk about, and we do believe in water, in water integrity, not only because uh, we think it, it makes sense uh, to ensure better services, uh, better water services for, for everybody and more equitable services, but also because in this uh, risky situation and, um, and where the security levels are low, uh, it's, we need to take care of, uh, of the approach we use. And sometimes talking, uh, talking about corruption very openly, even if it's right, even if it's honest, may you know, provide uh, even additional fears in communities, and so they cannot open up to disclosing the real problem. So we need also to, uh, I agree in that sense with Magda, and the, the wording it's, it needs to be appropriate, and, and, and in a way it's very important that we do understand that we are not in the position to offer them more risk than those that, I, that they are already facing themselves. So, thank you. Yeah, that was, that, was, that was, again, fascinating. Um, uh, you kind of half answered my question that I was going to get to towards the end, but I'll, I'll ask it anyway. I mean, us journalists, we tend to have this sort of slight image of ourselves as these sort of heroic kind of Woodward and Bernstein kind of figures going out and doing gonzo journalism and investigative stuff, but, um, and naming and shaming, as I said earlier. But you're giving us a very different picture of the journalist's proper role as being uh, to give 
communities a voice, to give the poor a voice, the people without a voice. Um, I mean, you've had some examples of how that seems to have played out quite well. Is, is that your general experience, or do you sometimes find that journalists are, are really do want the award and don't really want to be that much help? Well, no, I mean, my point was, uh, you know, sometimes, especially for organizations like, um, I, I, I find it interesting, the uh, starting also of, uh, when Magda said, I was based in London and my colleague was based in, in Kenya. And, you know, it's usually difficult for us as an organization, smaller organization, to really get the sense of what is happening in the field, uh, not, not in terms of, of the topic as such, but also having this um, sensitivity for what is uh, uh, the, the, the topic and how to treat it, um, how to talk about it, how to uh, unfold it, if you want. And mm -hmm. journalists are key for, for in, in that sense. I mean, if you ask me if, if I consider you heroes, I would say, yeah, sure. I mean, there are a lot of, of journalists that uh, are in, in danger and they, they are, uh, you know, uh, threatened with uh, um, uh, criminal groups trying to, to, to kill them. I mean, I'm, I'm from Italy. Um, I mean, Roberto Saviano is hidden somewhere because mafia is, is looking for him. So, uh, I mean, the, the point is, I really do think that each one should be good at his job and so, uh, and at the point where we do recognize our boundaries, if you want, or our roles, that would be a point for better collaboration. So, um, that's okay. how I see it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay.